Bhagavad Gita, verse 3.33 Even a man of knowledge acts in accordance with his natural disposition, for all beings follow their nature. What can be achieved by repression of the senses? Sar Ardavashini One may raise the following question. A person who does not obey the order of a king is punished. So, if a person does not follow the order of Parameshwara, the supreme controller, is he not punished as well? Should he not fear punishment from him? In response, Sri Bhagavan says, Yes, this is true. However, those who are engaged only in satisfying their senses are unable to follow the order of the king or of Parameshwara, even though they can discriminate. Their nature has become like this. The present verse, beginning with Sadrisham, is spoken to explain this. People may know that sinful activity will lead to punishment from the royal court, or even going to hell, and they may even understand that this will bring infamy and criticism. Still, because of the nature that they have acquired over a prolonged period, they act according to the temperament resulting from their sinful deeds, which brings only misery. Such people only follow their own disposition. They can, however, be restrained by my discipline or that of a king. A person with an impure heart can receive purifying impressions, samskaras, by performing selfless action offered to Bhagavan, Nishkama Karma Yoga. And a person with a pure heart can receive them through Gyan Yoga. Both types of people can be enlightened. It is true that neither process can help a person whose heart is extremely impure, but bhakti, which appears by my mercy, can easily deliver even such sinful people. As it is said in the Skanda Purana, Aho danyo si devarshe kripaya yasya te kshanat. Nijo pi utpulako lebe lubdako ratim ajute. O Narada, all glories to you. Because of your mercy, this low class hunter has, in just one moment, attained deep attachment, or rati, for the lotus feet of Sri Bhagavan, and is manifesting the ecstatic symptom of Pulaka, in which one's bodily hairs stand on end. Sar Artavarshni Prakashika Vriti A person with uncontrolled senses may be able to discriminate, but cannot restrain his senses by knowledge of scripture. Srimad Bhagavatam 6.1.62 After seeing the prostitute, the mind of Ajamila became agitated. He tried hard to control his mind by fortitude and knowledge of scripture, but being agitated by Cupid, he was unable to do so. All uncontrolled, degraded desires can be removed by the powerful influence of the association of saintly persons, or Sadhu Sangha. Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2626 by their powerful speech, saintly people can completely cut as under all the unfavorable attachments of the mind. Vyasanga means attachments that make one averse to Sri Bhagavan. Here, the word Eva implies the powerful speech of saintly persons alone. Pious actions, holy places, demigods, and knowledge of scripture are, in and of themselves, not able to destroy unbeneficial attachments. 
This should be understood. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur quotes Krishna as saying, O Arjuna, do not think that a man of knowledge will attain auspiciousness, liberation from bondage, if he simply deliberates on spirit and matter and accepts the shelter of sannyas dharma by impetuously giving up material nature, guna, and its related activities, karma. Even after the conditioned soul has become enriched with knowledge, he will still endeavor in accordance with his long-standing disposition. It is not true that one can give up one's nature by suddenly restraining it. All bound souls will continue to endeavor according to the disposition they have naturally acquired over a prolonged period. The proper way to give up this nature is to carefully perform all karma action in accordance with that nature while being situated in it. As long as the renunciation that accompanies the symptoms of Bhakti Yoga does not appear in the heart, the only means to attain self-auspiciousness is Nishkama Karma Yoga offered to Sri Bhagavan. This is because in this practice a person can perform his prescribed duties and also benefit from the purifying impressions generated by them. A person who renounces his prescribed duty will ultimately deviate from the path of perfection. When by my mercy or by the mercy of my devotee, Bhakti Yoga appears in the heart, there is no need to follow one's prescribed duty, because this path of Bhakti is superior to Nishkama Karma Yoga. But if Bhakti Yoga has not awakened, it is auspicious in all cases to follow Nishkama Karma Yoga, which is offered to me.